someone to get started in a second. We got a start time. I second. Okay, I'll make so a motion start to start time. the meeting. Yes, we'll get a start time of 6 11. Awesome, guys. Um, thanks for, for adjusting to the, the this Thursday. Um, kind of going over, get started on the agenda, uh, the upcoming programs. Uh, right now, uh, our pickleball and basketball are scheduled to go through the end of March. Um, there's a lot of interest and people want to keep playing. I've kind of talked to some of the pickleball people at the, at the event, and then I sent an email out today about basketball and got a bunch of responses. Um, so I put in requests. The, the pickleball one is approved. I put that in um, a couple weeks ago, I think. But I put a basketball win in it today. So I want to run those adult programs from um, April 10th to July 10th. So those are three-month programs again. Um, keep the same fee structure. It's uh, you know $55 for the whole program or five bucks a night. Um, like I said, I think there's interest. Uh, it's, it's, people are pretty excited about those things and, and getting pretty consistent attendance. Uh, also, in one of the responses about basketball, a guy had asked about time for practice. Um, the issue during season, obviously, is we need the, the gym space for the, for the youth teams. But if we don't need that gym space for the youth teams, I don't see any reason why, you know, I, I can't make that request maybe from, you know, 5.30, 8.30 and do, you know, 45 minutes or an hour before they start playing to have like shoot around time or, you know, practice or, or whatever it may be and just change the free structure and as a, something extra or something like that. But, um, that's what I'm kind of looking at doing for those kind of creating two new programs, but also, you know, extending those um, through the, through the, through the summer. So we'll kind of have a, a summer session of those programs that we, that we go, you know, April through July and then have a winter session of those programs, kind of like what we're doing that goes, I think whether we start in November or whatever, or December and, and goes through, through March. Um, like I say, we get we, for both, but for both, we're getting people coming in to, to do that. And we're getting pretty consistent um, participation. So, do uh, you guys have any any questions or recommendations on that? On the on that? No, I always see the guys coming in on Wednesday nights to play, and there's still quite a few people. Yeah, yeah, and we do the the sign in sheet and everything, and it looks like you know anywhere from 15 to 25 for basketball even. So that's yep. pretty cool. That's pretty cool to have the numbers like that. And they, they have to rotate in. So, so that's good. Yeah. Um, so I would initially was planning last year, we did that three on three tournament in March. Um, I was also considering doing a pitch pickleball tournament. I just wasn't sure on the timing. Um, we didn't get that. I think if we don't get that last weekend of March, that's kind of the sweet spot to do it in the, in the spring. Um, I think the other option, we didn't get the weekend we wanted. Uh, the weekend after that is the weekend before Easter. So we have the Easter event. Then that next weekend is Easter weekend. And after that, there's really no reason to do a basketball tournament. Um, so I think I want to make an even moving forward, change that event. And so do that event. Um, V1's going to sponsor that event. And then also do the pickleball tournament um, in the winter. Make those, I mean, it makes sense because those are window, indoor things anyway to, to do those in the winter. Um, so make those both winter events. Uh, Barstow's has agreed to sponsor the, the pickleball tournament. So That's we've got cool. those things lined up and, and we'll plan on doing those probably November, December, somewhere between um, um, January and I mean, I'm sorry, November and January. So that's kind of the game plan for those tournaments right now. Um, the, we have the April break program that we, we've, we discussed about staffing. Um, I've reached out to everyone that, you know, we, we have online form to fill out. I've got about 12 people on that. So everyone that has worked, I, I've reached out basically to all our resources. You know, everyone that's worked for me in the past year and a half to do anything, anyone that's filled out anything to have interest to work. Um, I've also reached out to all the volunteer organizations. I, I sent something out again today to everyone. And it's, it's not even close to having staff to, do a full week every day. I've got one person that said they want to do all week and another person that can do a couple days um, right now. Uh, the, the one we're doing right now, we had 11 kids register. We've had about five kids per day pretty consistently. This Today we only had five, we had five, but we had, I want to say eight, 
registered for it. There's, there's 11 kids registered total, just kind of different days, full program and stuff. Um, but that's kind of what the, the numbers aren't high for that, but also, you know, we do have some participation for it. Um, I don't know if there's a sweet spot in, in between. I've, I've talked to a couple parents and about kind of the way we did this and what they would recommend. And the feedback that I got was, if not the all we thing, this is an, the other option kind of. Um, there's really not anything in between those two things that, that seem like a, a more viable option. Um, I'm not, I, I know there's not 10,000 places that people have an option to, to go do something else, but I, people do have options. I know there's like a, a soccer camp that goes, goes all week and some things like that, but also um, I'm not seeing us being able to, to adequately staff and, and have a good environment for kids, you know, doing an all day thing in April. Um, yeah. I, I put in a request to do the three day thing like we did in February. Um, I've got staff that can cover the, the th like, so if we do the same thing in April, basically that we do now, we have the facilities, we have the staff, we have the supplies and everything um, pretty much set up. So, I mean, I, I think that's, that's the best way to go unless you guys have a better idea or something else we can pursue. Um, I'm more than open to hearing, hearing suggestions. I can't hear you. You know, I, I think that you have a better grasp on this than we do, and you know what the parents are saying, and you know, you know, what is kind of what you can get for help. So, I mean, you do what you think is best. You know, you, you have a better grasp on it than we do. Okay. Okay. Cool. And I think... Um, like any of the programs, I think with this format, we can improve on it. And if we want to expand it, we can move it forward or do some things different moving forward. We can. Um, I think this year it's been a good option with, with what, with what we've had to work with, but also, you know, like everything, I, I think we can improve it and, and do things moving forward. Like, like yeah. kind of, I think this is the best option right now. I mean, the biggest okay. thing is getting help. Right. <laughs> you know, but it's tough to get help before you know how much you need. And I mean, maybe, maybe you get, how much staff do you need for 15 kids? Well, we would need at least three, Okay. you know, but that's three people that are willing to work from 8, 15 AM to 5, 45 PM for five straight days. Yeah. You know, and, and to find people that are wanting to plus, you know, and you guys know how it is. If I get four people, three people that say they're going to do that. You know, when it actually starts, one person is going to do that, and then two of them are going to have certain days they can't be there. And, you yeah. know, it, 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 I mean, that's just part of staffing things. That, that's what happens. Um, like I said, I don't want to give up on the idea of having a bigger offering more. Um, I just don't now, don't see that being the, the best option, right, for, for this upcoming program. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> T-ball, uh, just kind of continue on upcoming stuff. We have T-ball coming up. That schedule will start at the, at the end of April, um, 429 to 610. That's kind of the run we did last year. Um, I think previously it was a six-week. Last year we did eight-week, and I thought that went well, so I want to keep it eight-week. It's I, I, I think it has to be an eight-week program. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, and I think the kids liked it. It was a good program. Um, there's some things we're doing a little bit different this year. They're going to I think we'll get games involved a little bit more and a little bit more early, some things like that. But I think it was a good program. But we've got the uh, facilities are, are approved and, and everything's set to go. So I'll, I'll, I'll get that stuff out here as soon as basketball is about fixing the end. Um, we did the free hitting and, and defensive clinics last year. We had over, we had about 100 people register for both of those um, <laughs> for each one. And then, you know, like always, you know, most of the kids came to the hitting one and then we had, you know, 15, 20 kids maybe at the, at, at the defensive one, which is good. Um, but looking at those numbers, um, I've got the request to do the hitting clinic on the April 8th. Um, that's the Saturday. Actually, I think that's a Saturday before Easter, so I may, may need to change that. <laughs> but um, okay. and anyway, I'll, I'll get that either, even if it's that next week, and I'll get that in. The, we'll do the, still do the free hitting clinic. Um, 
I had done a, a free pitching clinic kind of kind of th- in, into the season last year. We had, I think, 20 kids registered, about 10 go. I mean, that's when you do something free. A lot of people register and then a lot of people kind of show up if it's convenient because they don't have a skin in the game on it. Um, so kind of with the pitching clinics this year, uh, my thought was because we did have some requests for softball. So do a, a baseball pitching clinic and a softball pitching clinic, um, maybe make them you know, extend them a little bit and maybe do a, like a 15 or 20, $25 fee fee to do those clinics. Usually those are a little more specialized and I think we can keep it super low cost and offer a, a quality products product. So I, I think doing that free hitting clinics, definitely a benefit, but I don't think obviously like everything, everything doesn't have to be free, especially because we're going to have to bring in a softball person to, to, to do the pitching and possibly even a, another baseball person to do the, the, the pitching part of it on that end. Um, I've, I reached out to a softball coach and she's working on some recommendations and, and talks to people to come in to, to help out with that. Nice. Um, so can I, can I make a recommendation? Yes. And this is not a critique of you. I have no idea what you know about baseball, but I know it's a hundred times more than I do. When I went to that clinic last year, you have kids that are at an ability to learn about here and your instruction was up here. And I personally, I think you need to dumb it down a lot because I remember just sitting there. I was watching you going, Oh my Lord, he knows a lot, but I have no idea what the hell it's saying. And I I can only imagine how it was for the kids. Like you have a lot to offer. I just think, some of the terminology and stuff you used and some of the, it just needs to go down a little bit so they can comprehend it. Cause I mean, we had like kindergartners on up there and it it's, or maybe break them into groups of younger and older kids, like one time slot and another time slot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and I'm not criticizing you at all. I'm just oh, no, saying, I get you, man, I understand your baseball knowledge far exceeds 99% of the people out there. And you're used to coaching at a level that is way higher than what we were dealing with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like your college kids could all understand it. And I was kind of like, Hmm, Hmm. you know? Right. So, yeah, maybe before we get started, I'll put together a format. And, and, And part of that is, the idea is to have the coaches and parents there yep. so they can get some of those, you know, the steps of those, those concepts, then they can take those things moving forward. Cause I agree Definitely. a kid going for a one hour camp, isn't going to process. They're going to process a couple of those basic things, you know, and I understand, but yeah, we, we'll, we'll talk before, before we get going and get on the same page about, about the best way to approach those age groups. Okay. Um, and we did break last year. We broke it up. Um, Last year, we broke it up by age groups, but I think this year, to be more effective, we'll drop the level a little bit, you know, and go K through first grade, you know, you know, broke break those up instead of, because I think last year we had uh, like fifth and sixth come in separate. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe take that down a couple and have the younger kids go up with that older group or something like that. So, okay. Cool. Um, no, that's kind of all the stuff coming up. Do you guys have anything on questions or anything to add on any of that stuff? No, sir. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Uh, current programs, the basketball still going well. Uh, the third, fourth grade teams are going to do a tournament. And I, I honestly, I forgot the dates of that, but I think everyone else sends that. Is it the fourth? I think March 4th weekend. Um, I'm, I'm, usually we do, I try to do end of the year stuff for the, for the, um, you know, those kindergarten, that kindergarten group. Um, I'm planning on, I, I put in a request to be used in the cafeteria, kind of an extended period of time along with the gym on that last day. Um, I tried to plan a time where even the team that's playing out of town could get back and, and take part in the, in the activities. So it's got kind of, I can't make everyone happy because there's, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I schedule it on a different day, then you're, I'm asking people to come back another week for an end of the year party. Um, so just from past experience, the best way to maximize, maximize participation in those is to have where 
you know, that pre-K group finishes their last practice and then go, go basically to some degree right into that end of the year party and get their certificates and stuff and, and have their, their end of the year yeah. thing. So that's kind of the, the, the plan for that. Um, pickleball was that, that, like I said, that goes till the end of March. We're still getting, you know, 25 to 35 people each night. And I get one or two calls almost every week about the program and new people wanting to go. So um, I think that's going well. Like I said, the people I'm talking to want to extend that program. So I think, I think doing that, you know, going from, from April to July is going to be effective for that. Um, basketball still, like I said, 15 to 20 um, pretty consistently. So, so we'll, we'll keep running those programs. Um, you know, today was the, the, the last day of the February break program. I kind of gave you guys a rundown on, on how that's, how that's gone. But um, I think that went well. The, the, the people that participated went well. We had um, a, a volunteer help today and, and a, an employee, Chris Rex, helped out the, the first and third day. So, so, you know, we had some help and the people that went, I think I got, I got good feedback on, on how, how they enjoyed it. Um, the, the ski program still going on that's we had moved it to thursday nights to kind of get the the chaperones that, that we get and, and things like that and it it's, it seems like that's been a pretty seamless transition we did move it this year we did a six-week program last year um, again based on feedback from last year we increased it into the eight-week program this year so that's gonna it goes a little bit longer but that we did the eight week for this year um uh, last week, there were some concerns with some stuff at Berkshire East. They'd had missed a couple instructors and some things like that. But um, I can talk with Berkshire East about those things, and, and they've they remedied those things. So those will be taken care of. But that does stuff happens in the program. Last week, and have all those kids coming in. So that, that's other than that, that's been that's been a pretty good program. Um, good. We did do the the cabana again for them. And keep it simple, we got that first one. So as soon as they come in and go around, it's right there. So our cabana is right there in front of the lessons. So Number 12. Yeah, number 12. <laughs> we've been up there the last two weekends since oh, we sorry? missed signing. We've been up there the last two weekends because we missed signing up for it. So I took him up and he got private lessons on the last two Sundays and he's doing oh, pretty nice. well. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Um, you guys have any, any questions or Anything on the current ones, current programs? Um, Greg, I think yeah. you had asked at one point about impact or input on park and rec. I mean, I'm out of it right now. <laughs> Pickleball. I mean, I, I just reiterate, like, if we have any possibility of adding dates or whatever, like, I still think there's a huge you know, interest. It seems like it's just growing and growing, you know? Mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's something I think that we can kind of um, capitalize on and please people, but also probably a couple bucks too, you know? No, and it has. We've actually, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that, that is a thing. I mean, we're, we're depositing into money into our revolving account from Pickleball. Right. You know, right. the, the, the costs for us to run that program are pretty minimal. I, I think our fees for the yeah. school use since it's in the summer is about 400 bucks for that program. Um, the yeah. nets were... 150, 180 bucks. We got three of those, and they're they've lasted and they've been good. And I don't see having to replace those for another year or so. Um, yeah. We use painters tape to tape the floor, and you know to have you know a thousand so dollar or so dollars in that initial registration, and then be depositing you know 50 to 120 bucks every week. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool, you know, because we're we're having um, we're having a, a, probably two thirds of the people are regulars that are coming back pretty consistently in those. There's probably about 30 of them that rotate in and out with uh, that group. And then there's probably, you know, anywhere from eight to, to 15 or so new people that, that, that come each week. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I think that's growing and growing and, you know, a, a, a possible thing if you do with that next program, extend the time a little bit, you know, maybe go or even two hour and a half sessions, you know, go, you know, five thirty to seven, and then seven to eight thirty. So that that may be an option. But I know there's people that kind of go all over to to different uh, spots on different nights to do pickleball. So um, possibly, like so now that now that basketball's over, and then there's <laughs> or when basketball is over, there'll be more gym space. So that may be we may I'll, I'll, I can start polling the people to go to pickleball and even send something out. I think we've got 133 people that have registered over the last year that, you know, 
not necessarily come all the time that or at least have gone and register the program. Yeah. Um, so I can get some, get a mailer out to all those people and say, Hey, um, right now we're keeping that consistent Monday nights. You know, we're looking at doing this additional program, you know, find maybe finding that optimal other night, you know, whether it's Thursday or whatever it may be, I guess it'd have to be either, either Tuesday or Thursday with what we have to, to do a second night of pickleball. Cause we I should be done with CYO, uh, March 12th. Okay. We have two more tournaments. Well, we're in a tournament right now and we start another one, not this weekend, but next weekend, this weekend, we actually play for the championship. Oh, nice. Where's yep. that? Uh, down at St. Pat's it's, uh, uh, in South Hadley. Um, oh. What do they call it? A sportsmanship tournament. And we're three and oh so far. Oh, awesome, man. Congratulations. That's cool. Keep me up on that. Yeah, we'll we beat Agawam, Agawam, South Hadley, and somebody else. I, I don't remember. <laughs> um, and I think we're going to end up playing Agawam because the other two teams are, well, two of the other two teams are two and one. And uh, so they play Saturday to decide who plays us Sunday. Sweet. So that's super cool, man. John and Ian have done a phenomenal job with these kids. Like I remember watching my niece and nephew play in third and fourth grade and yeah. it was atrocious. Nothing like this. <laughs> no, these kids are playing at such a high level right now. You know, there's seven kids on the team and four of them are really good. Cool. Cool. So cool. That makes it fun. Yeah. Right on. No, so, eight, um, eight kids. So, um, so other business commissioners didn't anticipate. Is there anything like that that wasn't on the agenda that that we can need to discuss or? Well, I think there's something about I, unless I missed it about the softball field, but I don't know what we want to have on this meeting right now. Um, no, it's fine. There's nothing really to. Uh, tell you other than we're going to get uh, passed over for uh, the DPW quite possibly. Um, so I met with Carolyn today and well, Greg and I met last week with Berkshire and the guy said that no matter what, we wouldn't be doing it till next year anyways. Um, and the field is like where the fire station is, is um, needs remediation because there's arsenic like crazy in the field because of all the chemicals and stuff that have been put down. And so it needs to be cleaned, have the dirt taken out, piled up over on the other side, and then we need to bring in new dirt. And, you know, that's one issue. And that's going to be thirty thousand dollars itself. Just just the plan is going to be twenty five to thirty thousand. Um, then you factor in that we went to um, the planning board, and the planning board, one of the members is uh, the chairperson of the search committee for the DPW, and that's one of the spots that they wanted. Um, I don't know. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say so. From what I understand, um, yeah, that's one of the spots they were going to consider and looks like it's prob probable being that spot, but that maybe we should um, try to recommend other spots in town for a field if they're going to take that away from us. Right. And like, I guess that there are two lots on 47 where um, they were considering that are more like road frontage that the town could consider using or um, right where we had our ice skating rink. Like uh, we used to play softball there. So you put, you put like up the high rise back fence. So they're hitting like towards Hopkins, you know, um, and they're kids, you know, it's a softball field, you know, for the younger, well, you know, they shouldn't hopefully be belting it too much into route nine or Russell school, but you know, there's some other options out there. Like, I think if if we're going to get shifted, which I understand, like DPW, and I wasn't sure where it all ended up, um, that we should at least come forth and have a type of like, okay, well, 
we're fine. We're, we're, we're going to be a team player again, but you know, let's, let's, what can you do for us? So I had those conversations today. Um, and I was going to bring that up because I, I couldn't tell you what I was going to be able to talk about tonight. So it wasn't anticipated. Um, so there's only one other real spot of land that we could use. And that is down next to the transfer station. You can't put any buildings on it because there's X amount of feet of clay because it used to be a dump. So the I haven't actually looked at that spot, but I know that there are uh, methane pipes coming out of the ground over there. But there's 13 acres. There's plenty of room for us to build it. But I don't know if that's a great spot with methane pipes. And I don't, I, when, when I talked to Dan, the assessor, he was looking for land and they own another spot, but it's completely wood um, on the other side of the transfer station. And we just don't have that kind of money to be taken down, you know, three acres of trees. Um, and then he said, well, I don't know what kind of money you have, but the piece of land, I'm sure th there's a piece of land next to the school that we would have to buy. And that's, again, cost prohibitive. Um, so then I looked, and if you guys want to, and you pull up the school on your phone, and you look, um, if you guys look, go on Google or Apple Maps or something, and you look at behind the school, and you look at that big square of uh, grass where all the three fields are. So there is not enough room, according to Dan, because we did it on the Google Maps there, and he's got the measuring thing. And so field one is the one closest to that pavilion. Field two is the one over at the parking lot next to um, safety complex. the safety complex. Yep. And field three is the small one. So with field one being the biggest one, when they set up uh, the fencing in the outfield, that would prohibit the U-12 field from going there because there's just not enough space to have a U-12 field. And it, you'd have to take that uh, fencing down every time the girls played. So what I talked to John today and he said he would be willing to switch the field um, and put three over where there is nothing. So that way, even if the fencing went up, the little kids are never going to hit it that far and it's not going to be a problem. And then we put the U-12 where, I don't know. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, you can kind of see it. So this is field one. And then, uh, I can't, it's tough to show it to you. But uh, we could move field three and make it field four and use field three for uh, the softball field. And so we would still be building a field but we wouldn't have to pay for parking. We wouldn't have to pay for anything. I don't think that the, all we would have to do is literally level the field and put a field in. Um, and we wouldn't have to go through um, conservation. We wouldn't have to go through planning because we're not putting any impervious surp surfaces in because there's already a parking lot. There's plenty of parking. Um, and there's already a backstop for the girls. The only thing we'd have to do is build a new backstop and dugouts and all that stuff for uh, the little, the, it's basically the T-ball field and a practice field. Um, and to get back to your other point about putting it where it used to be, right around Route 9 behind the school or between Hopkins and what was the school? Uh, Russell. Russell, yes. So to put it there, um, to be a, a, an official U-12 field, you need a minimum of 175 feet. Okay, so when you add that, so that's, no, I'm sorry, you need a minimum of 200 because the minimum outfield is 175 uh, to on the baselines. Center field is 200 and then back from home plate. And that's if you stuffed home plate right in the corner but you still need 25 feet from behind home plate to the backstop. 
and I, I took a measuring wheel uh, last week <laughs> after Greg and I met with the designer. And there's 141 feet from the all the way in the corner to the exit road onto Route 9 from Hopkins. And then going towards the exit road from Route 9, that area, over to the exit road onto Middle Street is 163 feet. So no matter what we do, we can't do a U-12 field. That must have just been for the small six, seven, eight-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was young. I was third grade. Yeah. Maybe it was 10. How old are you? I don't know. But around then. Yeah, they might have they might have done the Lassie League and all that with the with the ground rule. You know, it goes into the driveway under a car, you know, you got a double. Um but yeah. I, I've been down that road before. Yeah, there's just not enough room to squeeze that in there. But yep. that's a really, really nice gesture and option. That Jim, so you're talking about by our shed, that's that field, the rookie gold field and blue field yes. that we would be able to utilize for softball. Um, yeah. And they already got five inches of clay in the thing. So you'd really only have to skin from second baseline in, you know, I mean, from that, that, that minimal work, just the infield. Yeah. yeah. And then we could barter with them and not barter with them, but provide them for getting that option. If we got the monies to use, then we could do the, the fencing and all that. And because uh, then we lower our budget. So the budget for building the field was what, uh, one, you were going to Greg, do you have that offhand? Hold on, here we go. Attach are a couple of the budget numbers. So, uh, the playing field, and this again was a year and a half ago, was $34,000 yep. plus uh, a backstop for $20,000. Um, So that's 54000 And then the rest of that money could be used to refurbish the other field for softball. So that's – and it, we we wouldn't have – there's so many less things that we would have to do. So oh, yeah. um, I talked to Filio, and he said he's fine with it. Um, but he his, his only – and, you know, not – to be rude, it's not really his choice, but I, I want to I want to keep softball, park and rec, and Cal Ripken on the same page as much as possible. But it's actually the school's choice, and so I have to go and talk to the superintendent and see how she feels about us doing that. But his his concern was having to put the big soccer field, um on mud because it tore up the field last year and it was horrible when we had to have three fields out there and one of them went over one of the baseball fields. And, you know, I, I mean, I understand that, but you know what, if they have to play on a muddy field once in a while, I'm sorry, you know, but it, it, it that shouldn't trump these other kids not having a place to play. Yeah. I don't know what anybody else is feeling out of this. No, that's no, that seems like a huge benefit. To, to everything that comes with that. For the last five or five or six years, we battled about that and we offered to do some seating and this and that, and that's not off the table. You know, we'll definitely help. We have some, yeah. some manpower, but they have to understand that those, that field is, has been run by park and rec for 25 years. And, and some kids, their only sport is soccer. And in those people, I was a board director and all that. And I was a field guy. Yeah, I get it. you know that that's their pride and joy. And you guys got to fix our area. Well, it's everybody's area, you know, and maybe we all have to be aware of that. And a lot of those people have washed out, you know, Jim, you and John and and that crew are the new uh, executors for that, that Cal Ripken and stuff. And uh, I, it was just met with really uh, bad, bad vibes from a lot of the a lot of the moms that were baseball moms. I, I got when my daughter was coming up through softball. And you can only practice one night every two weeks. That's that's just not fair, you know. No, no. And it, so the other thing is, is I think it would be less dramatic this year yeah. because John's so involved with the soccer. The soccer is what ruins the fields. He's also the Cal Ripken president. 
So he's, he can only be mad at himself. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we, you know we'll come forward and and help and volunteer, and, and we, we come up with solutions and, and be part yeah. of the be part of the answers. You know. Yep. I, have, I have no problem helping out with that. So, I mean, now that this is like this, I wonder, I don't even know, uh, we would still need a plan, but it would be drastically different um, because we're not doing all the other stuff, the parking lot and the road and all. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The so long fencing and all that other stuff. Yep. So I'm going to, I'm going to call the superintendent tomorrow and see what she's got to say. Sure. Um. You know, I mean, I, I want, I don't want to just stomp my feet and hold my breath because, well, they promised us the field. Yeah. You know, especially then, if this makes even more sense. And the timing of it right now, it's February. That's what we got to kind of start acting. Yeah. And, and planning, you know. Well, they, they we, we talked to the guy. He said, even if we want oh, yeah. to start, it's yeah. not going to happen this year. Right. It'd be another year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can, we can get chat about the. The softball field booming and all that, and yeah, another time. Sounds like a great option. That's awesome. So yeah, thanks, Jim. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Man. Yeah, when when he pulled up the map, it, it was just funny. He pulled up the map to um, show me the plot of land next to the parking lot at the elementary school that I guess Jeff Mish owns, and I was like, yeah, that's just cost prohibitive. We're not going to be able to do it. And as I'm looking at it, I can see one, two, three fields, and I was like, there's room there. But see how much room there is. Go out 225 feet. And it was way too far into the uh, field one. So I was like, go 225 feet from field three. And he did. And there's plenty of room. Yeah. So because cool. cool. it's wider than it is tall. So yeah. there's plenty of room this way. But there isn't if I, you know, field one's here and you put field softball yeah. here. There's just not enough room there. But gotcha. this way there is. And then he was actually telling me about East Hampton, how East Hampton had a similar situation. So they put all of the uh, home plates in the middle of the field and then they hit out. Yeah. And they saved a lot of room. So. Yep. But cool. all right. That's all I got on that. But, I, you know, I'll, I'll have more info for you. Um once I oh. talk to them. Awesome. You're going to talk to the superintendent of uh, Hopkins? Yes. Nice. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. So that's all I got. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. Is there anything else, guys, that um, for tonight we can add? Good deal. Okay. So um, since uh, it's the 23rd this month, um, I recommended for next month that 323 is that it's a fourth Thursday um, of March, but that also, like I said, it puts us a, a month from now. So 323 at 6 p.m. Is, does that work for you guys for the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah. It works for me. Okay. I'm sorry, Greg. Uh, I forgot to mention, are you in contact with the contractor for um, Zaterka and stuff? Yes. Yeah. Let me. Good. Um, the, and what is his What is his plan like after thaw and everything? Right. Um, yeah. It's uh, It's it's contracted through Willie Goat, which is the company that we purchased the the play equipment from. Mm -hmm. So I've been communicating with them, and then they they do they they contract the installers to come in and and, and do the work. Um, gotcha. I just uh, emailed back and forth with Willie Goat last week. Um, they had me send pictures of what it, the current state of the, the site and everything. And I did that. And they said they'd get back to me as when they got the installers lined up and, and had a good time to get back out here and, and do it. Um, I'll give them another maybe into next week and, and give them a call again to, to get a timeline because I want to get that stuff up. You know, I, th I think I want to get it up as soon as we can you know, yeah, as early in the spring as humanly yeah. possible. I think once they get out here, it should just be a few day process. So it's, it's not a big, a big, big, big thing. Um, yep. So I think we're online on track with that. The, the benches and everything, I got bids. I got four bids, put it out to really the handyman services and stuff is, is the only the place I could find that would, would take that job. 
um, pretty wide range of, of bids on that. But I've contracted the, the contractor that had the, the lowest bid. And we've we've phone tagged a couple of times in the last week trying to get, to get it scheduled. But um, but it's on track. When, once they get out there, we'll have them where they can come um, and uh, assemble all that equipment and, and get it bolted and everything into the, the cement slabs out there. Nice. Cool. Very well. Yeah, thanks for asking, man. I'm excited about getting that done. Um, it's like, yeah, we're moving forward and- to this. I just bump into it when I go by every now and then, and it's like, darn, I got to talk about that. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's frustrating seeing that stuff sitting there, but it's yeah. there, there's there's light at the end of the tunnel on it. Wait, I want to have a that that's kind of probably going to be on the next thing is 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 kind of an event or something like that to to get that get that opened out there. But you know, those those cool. all that stuff should be out should be completed pretty close to the, the same time. Good. Nice. Um, oh, lastly, we talked about the hot dog cart before. Did you talk to John? Yes. Yeah. So they don't want it, <laughs> um, which is fine. Uh, I've talked to, to DVW and they're going to get it. They're going to remove it and it's going to go on auction and it'll be out of our shed. Um, okay. I was going to have, I, I've gone through, <laughs> it's kind of funny with uh because and part of it, and the thing is, we just, we need storage desperately. Yeah. Um, as we've increased everything, this is the stuff we're doing. We have a lot of stuff, um, and you guys know my office. <laughs> I've got a lot of equipment in my office. You know, I've got five, one, two, three, six or seven of those huge bins that's just full of, you know, holiday supplies and decorations and stuff, yep. just for the the Christmas and the Easter and the the Halloween event. So we were going to move those in. Uh, the uh, Chief Bank and Able was going to store a bunch of that stuff for me. Um, and then I'd have to go get that for those seasons. But now that the, the shed's opened up, there's room for us to not have to do that. <laughs> so I, I talked to him today about it. Yeah. As soon as they get that removed, DPM is going to get that out of there. As soon as they get that, that trailer out of there, then we can get some of those supplies, the holiday supplies over to our equipment shed. And um, then we have all our stuff in a couple central central locations nice yeah yeah no that's good i'm glad that's moving forward on that <laughs> all right i'll stop asking questions now oh no that's good thank you awesome cool. thank you all right so um if we're good uh when you guys want to move to adjourn yeah move to adjourn i second that <laughs>